All right, greetings, dear Aquarius. This one is for you. That's you, Aquarius. This is Terra Illumination. It's your mini love and relationship generic report for January 2019. Welcome to Terra Illumination. If you haven't been here before, I'm just going to do the drills. I'm sorry for regulars, but I have to go through it because you never know who's going to show up. <clears throat> I'll do this while I'm shuffling, okay? Make it a little bit smoother. No jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals. I'm sorry, not enough time, space, room, and all of that. I want to point out that there's a description box below with all the links for all the Terra Illumination stuff. First, uh, consider the first Friday group healing events. That's where Terra, Terra Illumination is live in person, okay? We actually do healing stuff, okay? <clears throat> Next, Terra Illumination shopping. Yes, we have cool stuff. The silk scarf, legendary silk scarf. Yes. The book about January 2020. Yes. The other playlist about Astro Doodles for January 2019. Yes. It's all there at the end screen. Personal readings. Yes, we do that here. Even if you want to watch this for singles, you can do that too, but you have to allow for the laws of attraction. What are you tr attracting? What are you radiating? What are you attracting? <clears throat> also, guys, you know the routine. Cross watch for your significant others. And uh, also uh, watch for your sun, moon, and rising for yourself as if they're all different, you know? And then try to like weave a story together for yourselves. We can only do so much on these generic readings. So thank you very much. Again, check the links below. And number one, consider membership. That's the best way that you can say thank you to Terra Illumination is to become an actual member. Okay? Click that link and you can learn a lot more. Okay? We don't have time here. All right, cards are getting well shuffled now. I'm going to go through a, a, a moment of the Astro Doodles here, but I'd rather you just check out the other playlist, okay? Now, the thing is, it's a very, very dynamic month. We've got a massive, powerful Capricorn new moon eclipse, January the 5th, okay? Okay, just point that out here. And we have another eclipse the uh, Leo Aquarius eclipse, sun in Aquarius, moon in Leo, January 20th, as the sun enters your sign in Aquarius. So it's a very dynamic month, and you're going to really notice by the end of the month, okay? There's no escape, no way out of it, so you might as well start uh, planning now, getting used to it. I want to show you something here just briefly. For you, Aquarius, that eclipse at the end of the month is the very, very last of a year and a half or so of all the Leo Aquarius eclipses when the North Node was in Leo. So you might be relieved that this is all over. But remember, these eclipses have like ripple effects for months to come. So, you know, and this is happening right now at the end of the month, January 20th. It's in your first house and seventh house, okay? The sun will be in Aquarius, BAMO, zero degrees almost, very, very tight. And uh, the moon will be over here in Leo, your house of open enemies, opposition, maximum opposition, maximum uh, connection as well, maximum reflection from the mirror of the other. There's nowhere to hide here with the seventh house. That's why they call it the house of marriage or also the house of open enemies. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to go into that story. So anyway, you're going to know it. Okay, you're going to you're going to be a lot of stuff's going to come to the surface at that time and you'll have to deal with it. Okay, now we're going to go into the cards here. We're going to use a Terra Illumination Crucible spread. It's on the understanding that there's you, dear Aquarius, a significant other and a third entity which is the relationship itself, okay? And the relationship ideally would have a solid structure like a crucible that is able to withstand the pressures, of the alchemical pressures, as we intimate and separate in relationships, just like the tides. We're always intimating, we're always separating. It's a constant, never-ending flow. Can you guys handle it? Do you have the structure to handle it? That is the crucible. You'll see in just a moment. All right, let's have a look. Singles, if you want to watch this, you can, but you've got to allow for the laws of attraction. What are you radiating and what is being reflected back to you, the potential, okay? So let's have a look. 
going to cut it up, bless the cards, bless every single card, bless the whole deck, bless Terra Illumination, bless you Aquarius, bless the technology and the cameras that we can even do this at all. Please consider becoming a member. It's the best way to say thank you. And it's about the same as having a cup of coffee. All right. So let's have a look. Okay. Cards are cut and we're ready to go. Dear Aquarius, that's you. What are you radiating? Okay. Think of yourself like a smartphone. What are you transceiving? You're a transceiver. What are you radiating? What are you receiving? Over here, what about the significant other? Okay. What are they transmitting? Now, this is not a couple's reading. It's all about you, Aquarius. And we're allowing for the presence of another energy. Okay. Deep, deep inside of you, Aquarius, deep, deep inside of the other. And at the core here, the relationship itself. This has its own structure and identity. I'm hoping you can see the crucible here. This is the bowl-like structure. This is where, this is the environment in which we intimate, we separate, we intimate and separate in a never-ending dance, okay? So that's what we're dealing with here. What is this like? We're going to find out eventually. Let's have a look over here. Uh, what is... Uh, what is being birthed? Like, think of this as a living organism. What are you guys doing? What are you putting in? What are they putting in? What are you creating? What do you own here? And what is being grown out of this? Okay, let's have a look at the circumstantial energy, environmental influences. I like to think of it as weather. Blame it on the planets, whatever you want. It's a very intense month. It's a very dynamic month. There's no way out. So you've got to deal with it. Let's have a look. It says two of wands. Well, I'm happy for you. I think this might be like a, a sense of relief in that towards the end of the month when the sun gets into Aquarius, maybe a lot of things will make sense to you. Maybe that full moon eclipse will be a culmination and a, a lot of bright lights will go off in your life, in your world and relationship. You know, a lot of aha moments. So with the two of wands energy, my feeling is this is a gentle tap on the shoulder from your angels to say, guess what, Aquarius? There's a whole new adventure opening up for you. Please be prepared. There is no guidebook or map at this moment in time. You are on the very tippy edge of your own evolution here. So please be grateful. Please see the excitement and the privilege of what it's like to be alive at these times on the planet where we can even do things like what we're doing here. Frankly, it's amazing that we can do this. You know, thousands of people all over the world watch this stuff. I think it's crazy. But, you know, now it's normal. Crazy is normal. So I, my feeling is two of wands. This, this is like the fresh energy of new horizons going to open up for you. Having lived your life already up to this point. Now, you might have all sorts of horrific stories to go on, and you might have some amazing adventures. But either way, everything's going to culminate towards the end of the month. And then at the same time as the culmination, bam oh, the sun is lighting you up for uh, what's coming up towards the end of January and into February, where you have a new moon in Aquarius in February. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's have a look. What are you radiating now? Okay, the hermit. Okay, well, with early parts of January, that would make sense because all that huge, massive wall of Capricorn energy over here is going through your 12th house of hospitalization, uh, in the infirmary, being detached, ostracized, separated uh, from society, the house of self-undoing, the house of everything collapsing and falling apart. Uh, as it, that often happens with everybody when the, the sun is going through the 12th house. It's it's like the end of a year cycle for you guys. And then when the sun comes into your first house, which is what's going to be happening to you, it's the beginning of a whole new life, a whole new sense of adventure, a whole new year. You could almost think of this as your new year reading, you know, almost like a birthday reading if you want. And so on that understanding... My feeling is that you're coming into the month here realizing that this is what it feels like to be an Aquarius. Uh, at, you know, a lot of Aquarians have very like unique identities. They, they really only uh, resonate their own energy. It's like you can't uh, really box them. And, and so it, sometimes it can make you feel very 
like weird or unique or alone or isolated or separated from humanitarian in kind of a geeky, weird way. And, and then you come to realize that, oh my God, that's not just something I read in a book. That's actually kind of real because you can, because Aquarians are so unique and could be often very hard for Aquarians to relate to others or for others to relate to Aquarians because they don't have any of these kind of generic guidebooks, you know? And so you might be feeling radiating at the beginning of the month. Wow. It's all about me. There is only me. There only ever was me. There only ever will be me. And I don't have anywhere else to look or turn except me. Yes, I have this relationship and whatever, but ultimately I'm realizing and I have realized that I have to accept ownership for everything in my life. All the good stuff, all the bad stuff, including the love and the relationship. And it's a bit of a profound moment here. I think when you realize the, the scary sense of solitude and isolation where the whole of the rest of the world is like doing all its stuff and then there's you. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, but you're in this relationship thing. So how does that kind of you energy work with the other? What are they reflecting back to you? What are they ra radiating over here? King of Cups. Okay, so with the culmination energy happening with the full moon, eclipse towards the end of the month for you, Aquarius, my feeling is that you're radiating, you're, you're relating with someone who's doing everything that they can to be the best person they can for you, no matter if that is really pathetic, even if they're like a loser or a complete derelict in relationship, they're actually doing their best and they wouldn't have ever, I mean, you guys wouldn't even be in a relationship unless there was something that had brought you guys in together. And so you might be getting a new perspective on a significant other that you'd never had before. And in some ways you have to kind of say, well, wow, like they might be a complete like derelict, but there's something about them that is loving, you know, and it's almost like, I don't want to get deep into the philosophy here, but it's almost like, you know, when people have really, really challenging relationships and you wonder, why am I having such a challenging relationship? And then you realize, wait a minute, it's, you know, it's all about love. Something, something somewhere brought you guys together. And in your own innocence, you discover the magnificence of yourself, your individual unique self, and that ultimately, all the answers lie within, and that's how you find ways to create your life from without. But it's sometimes a very scary, lonely journey to get there. And you are relating with someone who is in some way, shape, or form on board with you in that regard. And they're probably doing the best that they can. But it might not be that easy, and it might not be that fun. It could be. My feeling is that they're doing everything they can to maintain their emotional integrity, their stature, their sense of self-respect, just to be who they are. Because my, they could be under a lot of pressure, frankly, well, in January with the big monster Capricorn new moon eclipse and then the Aquarius Leo eclipse thingy. You know, it's like, you know, they've got their work cut out for them. And they're, to me, it feels like they're just doing everything they can to hold on to be who they are and try to maintain the integrity and the love. And they might be really struggling, okay? But at least, at least the intention is there, okay? Let's have a look. Okay, what are you radiating deep down? Okay, the Four of Wands. So I don't know about the history of your relationship, Aquarius, but my feeling is that deep down, it's like you'd like to come out with all of this. Like if there's a lot of stuff that's bidden, uh, like hidden or buried that has been like neglected or lost, my feeling is that what you would really love to happen deep down is to bring everything to the surface, have a kind of like loving, almost like a powwow, almost like uh, like a makeup party. Let's Let's make up, you know? If we've had a really, really choppy time, and things are coming to a head towards the end of the month and they're going through their own convulsions you're going through your convulsions and you aquarius are thinking you know what 
what I really, really want. I just want to get this over with and get back to the good stuff. With the Four of Wands here, it's like the energy of wanting to be like fully open with the self and each other and the other with you. Something that could be celebrated. Like, you know how couples go through really traumatic moments and events together. And eventually they come out the other side. You know what? I have no idea how we did that. I thought we were going to lose it. I thought I'd lost you forever. Well, I thought I'd lost you forever. But hey, look at, look at us. We've actually endured. That's amazing. How did we do that? I have no idea. I, I have no idea. Well, let's celebrate. And that's what I think is happening inside of you, Aquarius, here. Like, there's something that deep down you really want to celebrate because of the history that you've had, the lessons that you've lived, the journey that you've lived together, and what that means to you. It's almost like, oh, I would just love to, like, go out, you know, myself on my own to celebrate or as a couple and celebrate or with you and your buddies and celebrate. But I, I, want, it, I want it to be, like, Something where we're not ashamed or trying to hide all the hard things that we have to do with, to you know, have to deal with, and we don't want to hide all the wonderful things either. Either it needs to be celebrated. Love, love loves to shine and to radiate and be celebrated. It's not something that you want to stuff in a drawer and pretend it doesn't happen and just like, oh well, if that's just for people in movies. My feeling is that you really deep down would love to have a loving relationship that is fully open and exposed and can be celebrated and shared in your community, in your world, with the other and the other with you in such a way that everybody gets it. Kind of almost like a wedding party. Okay. Over here, what about deep inside of them? The Nine of Swords. Okay, well, they're on a completely different uh, wavelength right now. My feeling is that they're actually working really hard just to like stay on board, let alone, you know, have some kind of love fest or makeup party or whatever it is. With the Nine of Swords energy over here, my feeling is that there's just a lot of stuff happening to them that they don't understand. They can't handle it. It's beyond them. It's beyond their capacity. And instead of being able to figure out or trying to figure it out, they're just trying to be brave and, let's say, hold their integrity as being a loving person just for themselves. But deep down, they are seriously, seriously rattled. With the Nine of Swords, that's super high level anxiety. That's like stresses mounting and maximizing. And of course, a lot of it is fear. A lot of it is in the mind because it might not be unfounded. It might just be the quaking fear, you know, you know, whoever they are, we don't know. I mean, this is for the Aquarius, but they might, their chart might look like this or this or this or this or this, whatever it is. That's why it's, I'm suggesting you cross watch, cross watch for them so you can see what kind of journey they're having to endure. And then you might be able to understand why they might be quaking in their boots, why they might be struggling and freaking out. Uh, they might not want to admit it or show it. Because a lot of people don't want to deal with the struggles in their relationship, you know? they just rather just smooth things over, plaster everything, and then put some paint on and hope it all holds. What about the core? The knave of wands. Okay, my feeling is that you're going to be exposed in this relationship between yourselves and each other about the, the desire for things to work, but the immaturity that you have, the immaturity that they have, the maturity that you don't have, the maturity that they don't have, and that the relationship is actually kind of very active. You know, again, it's the I think it's just the month of January because it's such a powerful, dynamic month of shift and change with the eclipses. It can't not be active. So my feeling is that the relationship itself is, is, is infused with this energy of we've got to find a way to make the most of this some way, somehow. With the best of intentions, the best of integrity, and the best of honor for myself, the Aquarian, and my loved one over here, or soon to be X, or soon to be loved one, whatever it is, no matter how scary and stressful it is for them, and including that I want to do this properly and have it have fun. I don't want to have to be like the hermit all the time. I want to actually have a love life. 
And so I feel there's a lot of like energy, like froth energy building up in the relationship here. Okay, so what are we growing out of this? The seven of coins. So my feeling, okay, is what is being grown and what is being fostered and nurtured. Remember, love is as love does. And in a very, very dynamic month like this, actions are going to speak louder than words. Okay, for sure. So be aware of that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of shift and a lot of change. And I think what might happen in the context of this relationship, please see this as the crucible. What can happen here with what's happening with them, what's happening with you, is that the relationship gets very, very activated, very, very, very activated. Like, what are we doing? I, I, I don't know. Uh, do we intimate? Do we separate? I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, I've never been here before. Oh, I've never been here before either. I don't know. But what starts to surface is that you realize everything that's wrong with the relationship. Everything becomes starkly clear of what's not working in the relationship. And then you'd have a chance to figure out, oh, my gosh. Is that my fault? Is that your fault? Is that our fault? Or is it the fault of the president? Or is it the fault of the planets or whatever it is? Either way, we have been exposed to everything and anything that is not working. So please, dear Aquarius, see this as a divine opportunity because then you know what the problems are and then you have a chance of healing these things. It's just like inheriting an old house and it's essentially okay at the core you know all the potentials there but it's like it's completely dilapidated and run down and it's a scary prospect about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it but the potential is there and so when you do the cleanup campaign and you do all the work on yourself okay remember this this is not a couple's reading aquarius this is all about you factor in the other work on yourself love thyself and do your part and what you have to do to like do the cleanup campaign, the remodeling of the relationship, because it's going to have to be remodeled anyway with these eclipses. And that's the journey. That's the fun. That's the excitement. That's why we love. That's why we are loved. It's because you get to learn and grow and evolve in the context of a relationship and the reflection of another and vice versa for them in ways that cannot happen outside of a relationship. In other words, your own evolution here um, is only possible to the degree that it needs to happen in the context of this relationship. So please, I hope you see this as good news where it's almost like, okay, we have a lot of remodeling to do. You know, let's make it fun. Like, ah, I'm scared of it. We're going to make it happen. We've got to figure out what to do and how to do it to make this thing work. Even if we're part in company, like, how are we going to share this? How are we going to split up the house? How are we going to split up the money? Or whatever it is. But it means having to do the work, having to do the cleanup campaign to make things better. And that's all about you, Aquarius. Start a new life and make things better for you. And a lot of times that means cleaning up all the debris of the last year. Okay? So don't worry about it. Please, I hope you see this as a uh, as an opportunity, as a new adventure, okay? I'm going to put this aside over here. I'm not going to say anything more. You can reinterpret however you want. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Do the cross watches for others. Check out the links below for everything else. Thank you so, so much, Aquarius. All the best in 2019. We're off to an insanely crazy start. Bye-bye.